I appreciate the spirit in, in God's house this morning. It just feels good to be here. Uh, I appreciate all of the different all of the different things that you do. You know, everything from cutting grass, cleaning the buildings, doing the book, doing the songs, doing the praises and stuff. Uh, there's an old African proverb I think that says it takes a village to raise a kid, it also takes a village to pastor a church. I can't do this by myself. I don't want to do this by myself. And I do appreciate all of the help. Um, for those of you that did forget the Pastor Appreciation Day today, King Size Hershey's with Almonds. Who got you that? Miss Jill. That's what I was supposed to get in when I was running late. I'm so glad. Thank you, Miss Jill. That's for me well, and Miss Jill. One is, <laughs> one is never enough, so you know. Uh, I've lost 30 pounds and I'm doing it by eating Hershey's with almonds. So, you people just sitting there feeding them. Y'all think about it. All of your vegetarian animals, hippos, elephants, they're all beasts. Exactly. Look at all your protein eaters. They're slim and fast. <laughs> so, anyway. Second Kings, chapter number six this morning <laughs> for a few minutes. I'm not sure what the title is, so some of you have to come up with a title. Some of the things is what you're looking at. Some of them are seeing what you can't see unless you believe. Um, you know, it's just a, uh, do what? Second Kings. Second Kings chapter six. The story in Second Kings chapter six, uh, it begins with the ax head floating and, and all that kind of stuff. And I preached there before. And then it goes on down, picking up in verse number eight, the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with the servants saying, in such and such a place shall be my king. Shall be my shall be my <laughs> Had that on for the, the laying of the carpet so we could. Um... Oh, by the way, we put in new carpet in the building this past week. Um, if any of you want to contribute to that, you're welcome to do that. Um, but anyway. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, but then the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, which, which, which fool in our ranks is betraying us? Which, where, is the, where is the leak? Who's telling these other armies of where we're going to be camped? And they said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent thither horses and chariots and a great host and they came by night and encompassed the city about. Now, you think about it. <clears throat> if Elisha is telling the king of Israel where the camp of the Syrians are, don't you think he probably knew by God's provision that they were coming after him too? Now, I, I, got, I got some real sad news for you this morning. The devil doesn't like you. He's going to do everything he possibly can to surround you. He's going to do everything he can to get you discouraged, to get you wondering if God still loves you, to get you uh, where you're ready to go quit and hide. But you got to remember, God is always watching over you. If you're a child of his, we look at John chapter 17 this morning in Sunday school, and, and Jesus prays for his own. He said he don't pray for the world, but he prays for his own. And one of the particular verses in there says, and he's not praying for them only, but all those that shall believe. So Jesus was praying for you even the few days before he was to be crucified. He looked down through the eons of time and he started praying for T. And he started praying for Kathy. And he started praying for me. And he started praying for Melvin. And then he prayed for me again because he knew I was going to need it. But, 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 but Jesus, see, Jesus had the ability to look down through time. And see us. He sees the frustration that DJ has on the football field. He sees the frustration you have at your work. He sees the frustration you have as a 10 year old kid trying to grow up in this world. He sees the, the frustration of being, oh, you're about 90? 
89, 90, something along in there. Yeah. He, he, because she's able to look back and see what this country has lost and how downhill this country. I mean, even at 64, I look back and see how we used to start off the, the classrooms with the Pledge of Allegiance. We used to start off, even even down here at the primary school when I first started, we'd have a prayer in, 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 over the intercom in the morning sometime. And and so, you know, it was, it's, we, we've seen the, 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 the what's the word, right word, the, the, anyway, that for our, for our country and our people, uh, we were talking about, Melvin and I were talking about football this morning, and used to, uh, a long time ago, when we went out for football, we went out there and we worked our buns off, we went out there and we, we practiced hard, and we, we gave it our all. Now, uh, I think Gabby and Phoebe rode by the by the high school the other day, and there was about about 10 of the guys who were lined up, you know, out there ready to practice and stuff. And I understand your frustration, BJ, because the rest of them were over there goofing off instead of practicing. And, 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 and it's just the, 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 the steadfastness, the determination, the, the workability that, you know, our country has lost that. We have plenty of jobs in America, but nobody wants to fill them. You know, there's not an employer that I've talked to in the last two years that has got enough help. Uh, the school district, they're having to hire people from other countries because we can't get anybody to work in this country. You know, it's, and, and, they, and they hired you, on exactly. <laughs> We're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> but uh, but and remember the Old Testament now, when the woman got to the bottom of the barrel, that's where the blessings of God were. So anyway, you were right on time, Jill. There you go. So you were God's provision for the school district. But but it's it, here in this, in this chapter, you know, realistically you would think, okay, if God is telling this guy where my army is going to be camped, I'm pretty sure he's going to be telling them where I'm going to be camped. But that didn't cross his mind, apparently. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host come past the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto them, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And I got a little note in my Bible, that right under master, I wrote in pastor. Because sometimes you feel surrounded by the enemy. And, and, and sometimes you call me and sometimes you say, you know, what I do about this? Or I, I hear your heartache or I see your heartache or, and I pray for you and I lift you up before God and, and I try to counsel the best I can. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's good advice. Sometimes it's not so good advice, but whatever. Uh, advice is free, so, you know, you, you get what you pay for. Uh, but, but, but he says, you know, he goes out and he sees the same thing we see every single day. When we go to our workplace, we're surrounded by the enemy. Every single day when we go home, we're surrounded by the enemy. Not, not, that, not that our family is the enemy, but, this, but and, and sometimes it is, I understand. But, but the devil is trying to destroy our family. The devil is trying to, trying to, trying to drive a wedge between parents and, and children, between husbands and wives. We get this little difference of opinion. We get this little thing, and, and Satan tries to build it. Remember Solomon said, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. I guarantee you, the fight you, you you married folks had this past week was over stupid stuff that ain't gonna matter, you know. And and, and so, but that's that's what the devil does. He tries to interfere in our lives. He tries to he, he tries to surround us. And sometimes maybe maybe I maybe you don't feel it, but I feel it. Sometimes I feel trapped. Sometimes I feel like I got nowhere to turn, even though I know I got God, and even though I know I've got all of God's angelic force and all of the things that I'll get to in a few minutes. Even though I know I have all of that in my head, but sometimes my heart hurts. Sometimes the devil says, I got you now. I, I, I got that sore spot. You ever, you ever had a sore spot that was starting to get well, and then all of a sudden you bumped it on something, or you hit it on something? You know, I, I finally developed this rheumatoid arthritis, especially in this right hand. And, and sometimes I'll just forget I have it until I'm walking by something that I can, you know, and, I, and it reminds me. And sometimes we have those sore spots in life. Something maybe we've gone through that, 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 that has hurt so bad and it begins to get well and whatever. And the Satan specializes in pricking that little sore spot. You know, it just, and, and so here, this, this, this young, I mean, this young servant, he's been with Elijah. He has seen how he's warned the armies. He's seen how Elisha, had, is Elisha or Elisha? Elisha, okay. I get him confused sometimes. So Elisha. He had seen all of the miracles. He'd probably seen all of the miracles of Elijah. When Elisha was, was, the Bible says he poured water on the hands of Elijah. In other words, he was his servant. He helped him take care of him. He did stuff for him. 
uh, kind of like some of you guys do. Wayland's cleaning the church. Melvin's doing the bullet. Jill's doing the song service. The boys are doing the offerings. You're, you're, you're helping me. You're, you're, you're serving me. You're serving God, but you're serving you're serving me. You're, you're helping me do the things that I've done by myself for so long. You're, you're, you're teaching Sunday schools. You're taking care of children's church. You're cleaning the yards. You're cutting the grass. You're, you're picking up trash. You, the boys this morning, my, 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 my little row up here, my, my amen corner, um, they took the tarps out to the garage and put them away, and they brought all the paint that we used to do the garage, all the new paint and stuff, and they stacked it down in the furnace room so it wouldn't freeze this winter because I took all of the old paints and stuff we had down in the furnace room and threw that away, and these guys hauled it in for me. They were serving me. They were doing it for God. But they were serving me. Same thing this servant is doing. And hopefully these guys have been able to see Jesus in me. Hopefully they've been able to see. I, I appreciate what Jill wrote in her card this morning. I, I saved it here. Let me see if I can find it. Is that one you were? Yep. Yep. Because last week she said she came because of a visitor contest. And she, no, she, and, and she, she stayed because we had a children's ministry. But then she clarified. She said there's validity to that. However, I have stayed for the teaching of biblical truth that you have and continue to share. Thank you for your faithful leadership and dedication. It's my hope that all these young people, it's my hope that these young families, it's my hope that every single one of you will come in here and, and, and see and hear and grow in the Lord uh, because of the teachings that you have here. And it's my prayer that, that I say stuff right. It's my prayer that I, I give good advice. It's my prayer <laughs> that I... I, I what it discern the word of God, rightly dividing the word of truth, it says over in Timothy. It's my prayer that I always tell you right, because uh, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And I've learned a lot over the last 30 some years that I've been pastor. Um, and so here, he's, he's this, this young servant is probably freaking out like we do sometimes. We get into a situation where we feel surrounded, we feel trapped, we feel like there's no escape, we feel like that the uh, um, unless a miracle takes place, this is not going to end well. And uh, maybe I'm not the only one that feels that way sometimes. Maybe some of you actually feel that way sometimes. All the time. All the time, okay. And then verse number 16, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with me, or they that be with us, are more than they that be with them. Yeah. Now, the problem with that is that servant had already been out and looked. And he saw all these horses and chariots. He saw all these enemies that were surrounding them. Sometimes in our natural vision, all we see is the opposition. All we see is the overdue bills. All we see is the children who are not following in, in, in the footsteps that we would like them to follow. We see our marriage going downhill. We see our job that's not working out like we thought it was going to when we took the job. We see all of this other stuff. And because of that, I mean, that's right there in front of us. Yeah. Now, before we go any further, flip over to, uh, let me see, I wrote it down somewhere. I think, it's, I think it's somewhere in the Bible. I think that was what I was marking it in. Uh, where am I at? <coughs> Where's my little piece of paper? There it is. I knew I had it. In Matthew chapter 14, verse number 30, it says, I'll just tell you the story real quick. 14.30. Yeah, 14.30. Matthew 14.30. 14, but we have we have a storm going on out in the, uh, in the ocean, sea, whatever. And Jesus comes walking out across the water. And, and you know the story where Peter was out there on the water with him. Now what confuses me is in verse number 30, it says, but when he saw the wind. Anybody in here ever seen the wind? No. Wait a minute, Mel Melvin says he's seen the wind. I want to know what it looked like. The effects. I know we got But the Bible says when Peter saw the wind. Now what did the servant see? The armies all around the tops of the mountain, they, they had surrounded the city. Peter saw the wind, which is an impossibility. But like you said, he saw the effects of the wind. He saw what the wind could do. 
this this servant, he saw the, the armies of the horses and chariots and stuff. So he saw in his mind's eye, he saw what the effects of that was going to be. They were surrounded. They couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't do anything. Um, sometimes sometimes we look at our situations and we see the end of it before God's intervention. We kind of we kind of leave God out of our sight pattern. We see how bad it can be. That army hadn't attacked them yet. The army was just there. The Bible says, I think it's in 1 Peter, that the, the, your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He hasn't chewed on you yet. But he, he's, he's, he, he's looking around where he can. And, and, and if you know anything about lions and tigers and other prey animals or predator animals, they always look for the weak, the crippled, the ones. And so in our weakness is when we get attacked. But Jesus says when we're weak, he makes us strong. And so we can, we can stand in the strength of God in our weakest hour. And we've all had them. We've had those times when we just rather curl up in our bed and pull the covers over our head. We've, we've had those times when, when it just, if I could just stay hidden, if I didn't have to talk to anybody, if I didn't have to see anybody, if I didn't have to try to lead the team, if I didn't have to try to be a witness at work, if I didn't have to try to maintain my tongue at home, Uh, I believe it was David that said in the, in the book of Psalms chapter 27 verse 13 I think it is he said I would have fainted unless I believed to see see the key is believing Elisha told him back there in Kings he said don't worry dude he said the ones that are with us are more than those that are with them now Knowing me, if I was a servant, I said, dude, what are you seeing that I ain't seeing? I'm seeing an army that's got us surrounded. What is it that you're seeing? And I think maybe Elisha was seeing through the eyes of faith because somewhere over in the Bible it says that we, uh, we walk by sight and not by faith. Is that what it says? No. That ain't what it says? No. It says we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, look at you listening. Gold <laughs> star. <laughs> she gets a sticker. But, but, but a lot of times we do walk by sight. We only go by what we see and how bad it is. Yeah. And how hurtful it is. And, that, and, and, and God says just trust me. Lean not unto your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of your ways. And he will, he shall direct your path. He says there, unless I had believed to see. And, and, and a lot of times we just don't believe it. There's no way this situation is going to get any better. There's no way this person is going to change. There's no way this is going to ever work out for my good. And we know that all things work together. There ain't no way this situation can work out for me good. I don't know about you, but I've actually said to God, verbally out loud, God, what are you trying to teach me in here? I mean, I know you're trying to teach me something, but it ain't connecting for some reason here. You know, what is it that you're trying to show me? What is it that you're trying to teach me? And I know in my life, we look at, we, I mean, I just look at my life and I see how some bad situations that God was working it out for my good. God was using some of them to draw me closer to him. God was using some of them to get me in a position where he could use me more. Whatever the situation and the case may be in the individual situations I've been in. You know, I have a hard time preaching anything that I haven't been through. I, I, I didn't understand a toothache until the dentist broke my jaw. You know, I understand a toothache. Y'all tell me you're going to the dentist sometime. I just start crying. Maybe I'll, you know, I'll anoint you with oil, pray over you, know, baptize you again, whatever. You know. Get you get you close to God if you're going to the dentist. 
you know, I, I, I've had, you know, all kinds of surgeries, and so I understand surgeries cost me being put to sleep first time a couple weeks ago. Dude, it ain't no big deal. They ask you if you want to go to sleep, you go to sleep, you wake up, you don't even know you've been asleep. It's all right. You know, it's, you know, it's just, but, 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 but Elisha saw something that the servant didn't see. Why? Possibility. What did you say, Pat? I said he was using faith. Maybe he was seeing through the eyes of faith. See, sometimes when you see through the eyes of faith, you see things that ain't really there. That other people can't see. And, and Elisha told him, he said, chill, dude. Those that are with us are more than they do. I, I saw one of the old westerns one time. And... Uh, I, matter of fact, I was thinking about Custer's last stand down here. He thought he was. He thought he had the the the, 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 the colony surrounded, but all of the other ones had him surrounded. And, and I, I just picture that in my mind as this particular chapter. You know, the the Syrians thought that they had God's man surrounded, but in reality, God had him surrounded. The Bible says, "Be careful when you entertain strangers, because sometimes you can entertain angels on the way." Did you know the angelic force looks after you all day, every day? Yes. Did you know the angelic force looks after your children all day, every yeah. day? I get tickled at parents when they tell their children, be careful. Mom, I am so glad you told me. I would have, I would have, I would have just fallen headlong down those stairs unless. You know? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like driving with your wife. You know, for years, you're just driving along and you think you're doing great until your wife gets in the car. Turn here. Back up. Watch out. Stop by the screen. They're not doing a good job. <laughs> I don't know how I would have survived <laughs> if she hadn't been in the car with me to tell me to turn here or the light was green or whatever. You know, it is just <laughs> but 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 he says here, how in the world? I, I can just I can I mean I know this servant because I've been this servant. I don't know what you're seeing, dude, but I'm seeing the enemy that's got me surrounded. I ain't seeing these people that you say we got more with us than are with them. And notice what Peter saw back over there in Matthew. What did he see? He saw the wind. So I'm going to tell you real quick, the enemy comes in all kinds of different shapes. He saw the enemy in an army that he could see. Peter saw the enemy in the wind that he couldn't see. He could just see the effects of it. Sometimes in our life, we look at bad situations because we've seen the way they work before. And we don't see where God can and has delivered us. Because the more, the, the, the more you trust God, the more you, you, you have faith in God, the easier it is to trust God and have faith in God. Because God will reveal himself to you. God will come through for you. He says, he says that, that uh, we have angels. He said, you know, that the angels will, will, will watch out for us. Take care. I don't know. I, I, I can't even begin to imagine the times that the angelic force has intervened in situations that I didn't see. I mean, I've seen them. You know, I've seen them intervene in some of the situations I have seen. You know, keeping my car on the road or, or, or avoiding an accident or whatever. You know, I've seen those things. But can you imagine all the things they protected us from that we didn't see? You know, and here he says, those that be with them are more than they be with us. Can't figure that, Elisha. I know you're a man of God and all that stuff. And then the prayer comes. The next verse, look at it. And Elisha prayed. He said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And see, that's what I pray for you. Lord, open their eyes. Some of them are young Christians. Open their eyes. Some of them are doubting you. Open their eyes. Some of them are struggling. Open their eyes. That they can see the truth of God's word. How that God will, will watch over them. How that God will protect them. How God will take care of them. How God will forgive them. How God will walk with them. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. 
Even, even, even Peter out on the stormy seas, he, Jesus was right there. And Peter took his eyes off the Lord. He took his eyes off Jesus. As long as he was watching Jesus, he was all right. But when he saw the wind and the effects of the wind, he started to sink. And sometimes in my life, when I take my eyes off Jesus and start looking at circumstances, and start looking at situations, I start to sink. And then it leads deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And the longer I keep my eyes off Jesus, the deeper I get into depression or anxiety or, or worry or whatever it is. And then when I start, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm just trusting you. Anybody ever got to the, to the, to the bottom of the barrel and you said, I got nowhere else to turn, Lord, I'm dependent on you. You know, what would happen if we got that position way up here? Instead, I mean, when, when the problem first arose. All right, Lord, it's your deal. It's your problem. You said you would take care of it, so I'm trusting you. And he quit worrying about it. Rose and I were having a discussion yesterday. I don't even remember what it was. And she, she asked a question, and I asked a question. She didn't like the answer, so I said, no. I said, end of discussion. It's over. She asked me again. I said, no, 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 it's the end of discussion. I'm not talking about it no more. It's done. It's over. <laughs> finished <laughs> and I'm usually the one that drags it on and on and on and on, and on. so I learned and then when he opened his eyes again and the Lord opened the eyes of the old man I, I want to tell you I want to tell you in all seriousness you cannot see how God can take care of you unless you have believed and opened the eyes and, and God opened your eyes the, the verse says that the Lord opened his eyes so that he could see. Mm -hmm. Your natural eye can't see God's protection. Your natural eye can't see God's forgiveness. Your natural eye can't see God's mercy. That's why he says lean not unto your own understanding. And I'll just say lean not unto your own sight. Lean not unto your own walk, but acknowledge him in all your ways. And he shall direct your path. Now, if we can't look at the wind, and we can't look at the army. What can we look at? Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. I believe it says something to the effect of looking unto Jesus. I'll get there in a minute. Yeah. Let's just start with verse number 1 because that's the same situation he was in. He was looking at the armies around and he couldn't see the great host of the Lord that was surrounding the army. And in Hebrews chapter 12 it says, Wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Who did witnesses? Who is, who, who is that that's got the army surrounded? I always hear people talking about, you know, mom's gone to heaven now and she's watching over us. Or, or dad's gone or Susie's gone or guinea pig gone or whatever it is. I really don't think guinea pig's going to be in heaven. But anyway, you know, whatever. God created them, so I know animals are going to be there. I just made a whole lot of enemies when I told Gabby her guinea pig won't be in heaven. He'll be there. We have faith. There you go. <laughs> Lord, open his eyes. <laughs> yeah. If you want your guinea pig in heaven, I'm sure God will give you your guinea pig in heaven. No, too much work. <laughs> But, but he says, we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Stephen was standing there and he looked up into heaven when he was being stoned and he stopped seeing the rocks. But he said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand. Now, I don't know if Jesus is going to stand up for you and I or not, but I bet Peter will. I bet Paul will. I bet Moses will. I bet Joshua will. I bet Gideon will. I bet Deborah will. I bet Mary will. I bet that little lady that threw in the two mites. See, I don't know if you can see them or not, but when I go through struggles, when I go through challenges, I see Peter because he's kind of my favorite. He says, you got this, buddy. He says, I'm living proof that you can get through this. When I do something stupid like Peter did, don't worry. If you ask God, he'll forgive you. All you got to do is just, just, just swallow your pride and ask God to forgive you, cleanse you. 
and in turn from you would be what? And I, I just see all of these people. I see maybe Nicodemus who went away sorrowful. And then later you see him show up at the cross. I, I see, man, I just, there, there's so many. But you see, see Timothy. When he had stomach problems and he was trying to pass from the church and he barely heard every time he thought about having a preach. <laughs> <laughs> and Luke's favorite verse, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. <laughs> you know? But, but I, I just see these, these people. And they've already gone through what we've gone through. I maybe, you know, and, and I don't know how much our parents or grandparents, I don't, I don't know what God allows them to see. I don't know. But maybe you'd like to thank your mom. Just looking down and saying, you got it, Jill, it's okay. I made it. Maybe, maybe you think, you know, your, your grandma or something. Looking down and saying, stay, stay, stay faithful. When you get here, it'll be worth it. I remember one lady that I was with there in the hospital room. She had had a major, major stroke. She couldn't walk, she couldn't talk. And she was just kind of muttering. I leaned down in the hospital bed and I got real close to her, her head there where I could hear what she was saying. And I, I just stood there. And all of a sudden, her eyes lit up. And she said, Wow, it is beautiful. And I'm not telling you a story I read, I was there. She said, It's so bright, it's so pretty. And she started singing a song that I've never heard before or since. And I don't even remember it to this day. But she started singing. And then she snapped those eyes at me and she looked at me and she said, I didn't want to come back. I said, well, I didn't tell you to come back. I said, but if you're back, God has something for you to do. She swung her legs over the side of the bed and sat up. She said, I gotta go pee. And she couldn't move 15 minutes earlier. So I know if they could talk to us, they would say, stay, stay faithful. Stay by the stuff. Maybe your parents, your grandparents, your child, whatever it is. Stay faithful. Stick by the stuff. When you get here, it'll be worth it. And it's, it's, it says, we're, we're compassed about with so cloud of witnesses. Let's lay aside every weight and every sin which so easily besets us. Did y'all know doubt was a sin? Did you know untrust was a sin? Well, I'm telling you, for those of you who didn't know it, I'm telling you this morning. Trust in the Lord. Lean not into your own understanding. He said, I would have fainted if I had not believed. So if you don't believe, you probably will faint. You'll probably sink down. You'll probably go. But, but, but God says, I'll be there. Yes. And then who are we supposed to look at? We can't look at the wind. And we can't look at the surrounding army. And we can't look at circumstances. What can we look at? Verse number two, looking unto Jesus. Yes. Looking unto Jesus. The beginning and the end, the author and the finish, the beginning and the end of our faith. He's the one that started it all, and he's the one that will finish it all. And so, so if we keep our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, I don't see nothing joyous about being crucified. But back in John 17, he says, I'm not praying for the world, I'm praying for those that shall believe. And so I, I, I can only imagine, as Jesus was laying down his life for us, he was thinking about you and me. There's an old song that says, while he was on the cross, I was on his mind. And so that caused him joy. I'm going to save Kathy from hell. I'm going to save Tanner from hell. I'm going to save Russell from hell. I'm going to save Tiffany from hell. And that causes joy. If I know that I can spare some of my children, I had a big argument with two of my kids this past week. And I, if I know I can spare them from some heartache and some hurt, that causes me joy. Even if it costs me something, it causes me joy. Because I've been there. And, and I see that in Jesus that he was able to save us. 
He was able to become the sacrifice for us. And that caused him great joy because nobody wants to see Tina burning in hell. Nobody wants to see Kathy burning in hell. There's other people that maybe you would want to see burning in hell. I don't have anybody that I want to see burning in hell like this particular man. There's some people I would have liked to hell over the flames for a little while just to give them a little taste of it. But I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell and Jesus doesn't either. Remember the verse that said God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repent. See, God don't want anybody to go to hell either. People say, well, how can a loving God send people to hell? He don't. He allows them to go because of their own choice. It's just like us. When we make stupid choices, we have to deal with the consequences. And God says, if you make a stupid choice and not trust me, you've got to deal with the consequences. Who for the joy was set before him, despising the shame, being crucified naked and humiliated, that's, that's a pretty big deal. How many of you ever had a dream you were preaching or teaching or standing in front of a group naked? Yeah. Always trying to get to work. Are you trying to get to work? You have always needed, always trying to get to work. <laughs> See, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't really mind. You know, God created us naked, so it'd be all right. You know, you want to go out here laughing? That's your choice. You know, but it's it. But but can you imagine? Because the Bible says they stripped his robe off of him. And they hung a purple cloth on him. And I don't think they said, come here, Jesus, hide behind this pole. I think they just did it out there in front of everybody. And, 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 you know, and, and then to have somebody spit on him. And then the Bible says that they, they begin to hit him with their fist. Despite him. He went through all of that for you and me. And now, though, now, he's sitting down at the right hand of the Father. And whenever you screw up, he said, Daddy, remember, I paid for that. We're going to talk to him through the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk to him through the pastor, through the Sunday school teacher, through a verse they read, through a song they hear. But we're going to, we're going to speak to him and we're going to, let me change it, we're going to speak to them because you heard us make some mistakes too. But we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to work with them. And we're going to teach them and we're going to grow. Because that's what the Bible says the Holy Spirit does. He teaches us and guides us and helps us. He's got a full-time job teaching me, I know. But, but we go back to Kings. Now we go back to 2 Corinthians. It says that we walk by faith and not by sight. And then we go back to, I think it's in John maybe. It says, Lord, I believe but help my unbelief. See, we, we come in here, we want so badly to believe, but then we go out there and we see the surrounding army. And we come back in here, and we get all hyped up again, and man, man, I, I got God, I got the angelic force, and I got the Holy Spirit, and, and I, I just got all of this stuff, and, and, I, and I get my candy bar, and I go outside the door, and there they are again. And they're trying to take my candy bar. <laughs> <laughs> I brought me a donut this morning and I only got half of it because somebody took half of it before I got there. Yeah. Ain't nobody getting my candy bar. It's mine. Uh, they should need a candy bar. Don't, don't take it out on her thigh. I gave it away. Take it out on me. What? What is she looking at? She's she looking out the window, see if the army is still there. She, she, she didn't go outside. Anxiety is real. Anxiety is real. Kathy's going to go out the door now. But she's looking at the church. She's looking around. Wait, they're there, baby. They're there. But Lord, open their eyes. And that's my prayer for you this morning. Lord, open your eyes. Lord, open their eyes. Lord, open my eyes. I can see how you care for us, how you love us, how you take care of us. It's just, God is, is, is good, has good, will always be good. And the Bible says he never changes. So the same God that was there with that servant, the same God that was there with Moses at the Red Sea when he says, what's in your hand? And all he had in his hand was a stick. <coughs> and you think about, what can you do with a stick? Depends on whether God's got that stick or not. 
I know you can you can whack one or two of the enemies in front of you. I know. But God, God is just. I mean, if there's no other proof that God is real and that God has existed, number one, you can ask my children. You can ask my wife. Jill has been here longer than anybody else, and she has seen how God has worked in my life over the last 29 years. And God, how God has taught me and is teaching me. And hopefully God is teaching you and growing you and helping you. Yeah. That's about all I got to say about that. Hope it was worth your time. If it wasn't, just keep your candy bar. <laughs> God, Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, God, for the way that you always intervene in our lives. God, we thank you that there are more with us than there are with them. Help us to be able to see in our daily activity. I know we see it here, where we're surrounded by good, godly people. But God, when we go out there, help us to see. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great afternoon.